Every August, thousands of students descend upon Boston, and they don't know how to use the tea. Predictably, this makes a mess. To help reduce the chaos, I've made this video to show you how it works. Now, you can figure all of this out on your own, of course, but if you watch this video, you won't be doing it while 50 people are waiting in line behind you. So, let's get started, and I'll tell you about the MBTA. The Metropolitan Boston Transit Authority, or T for short. Here's a map of the T. These are posted in all the subway stations. The T is four subway lines, red, green, blue, and orange, hundreds of regular buses, silver line buses, ferries, and the commuter rail. I'm going to focus on the subway and regular buses. So what do you do? First, you want to get a Charlie card. This is a Charlie card. This is a Charlie ticket. These are more expensive. Uh, they're flimsier, temporary. Uh, these are the kinds of things you want to get your family while they're helping you settle in or when somebody's visiting. This is more durable. It's cheaper, solid. Uh, even if you don't plan on using the tea much, you probably want to get one of these. Okay, so where do you get a Charlie card? Well, there's bad news and good news and bad news and good news. Bad news is these machines will not give you a Charlie card. Good news is the tea employees, like in this information booth, will give you one. The other bad news is they will likely be swamped and run out. The other good news is Star Markets, 7-Elevens, and some other retail places have these Charlie cards and will give them to you for free. Some can even charge it up. Now, suppose you've gone to the Star Market, say, and while you were buying your very first can of tuna fish, you went to the customer service desk, got one of these, and had them charge it up. They want to know how much money to put on there. Here's a posted list of the fares. And here is my simplified version. As you can see, the Charlie card is cheaper than Charlie ticket for individual trips on the bus or the subway. If you plan on riding a lot, I recommend getting the monthly pass. The monthly bus pass is $55. The monthly pass that covers the T and the buses is $84.50. I generally find that worthwhile myself. So suppose you need a Charlie ticket and you go up to one of these machines. Notice this machine says no cash. Watch out for that. This screen has sort of a healthy yellow glow to it. This screen is orange, and that means that it's not taking credit cards at the moment because its connection is down. So here's a demonstration of me using the machine to buy a fare. If I press on two-way trip, round trip, it gives $5.50. So I go back, and it takes a while. And now I press for a single fare, one way, and it says $2.75. I tap cash, because that's the only option on this machine at the moment, and I feed in the $5, and it thinks about it, and eventually it prints out the ticket, which appears down there. Pull it out firmly, it gets stuck a little, and then it's giving the cash, which it's flashing the light. And I choose for a receipt. Oh, there's the change. Press yes for a receipt, and that shows up in the bottom left slot. Pull that out. Now, I can feed this back in, as it says somewhere on this screen, down in the bottom right, that you can feed the card in to add value or see the amount on it. So I slide it in, arrow first, add value. There are specific amounts you can add, or you can choose your own. I put in $1, press Enter, and the computer gets confused because it says it must be a whole dollar amount, even though I put in $1. So we try it again. Put in $1, press Enter, now it's OK. Tell it cash. Feed in the dollar coin, and it adds the value printing a new ticket for you, and it comes out. Do I want a receipt? No. Now I can feed it back in and check the value. Ticket information, and you can see that it now has $3.75 on it, the two seventy-five dollars fare plus the $1 I added. Cancel the transaction, get the card back, and there you have it. Okay. 
Now I'll use my credit card to buy a monthly pass for my Charlie card. Tap the Charlie card to the black rectangle. Tap for the monthly passes. For the link pass, which is bus and subway, it says 8450. Credit card. Confirm. Put in my credit card in the slot there on the right. Put it in, pull it out quickly. Tap the Charlie card again to the rectangle, very important and the card has been updated. I now have a monthly pass. I can ask for a receipt, which I do, and it will print out as usual down below. Only one slot on this machine, that's fine, and now it's all set. Okay, so you've got your Charlie card or your Charlie ticket and you're ready to get on the train. You have to approach the gate, and the gate has a sensor uh, for the Charlie card or slot for the Charlie ticket. A properly functioning gate should look like this, and the screen should say welcome. However, it might say smart cards only, and if the computer didn't get the memo, it might just look like that. So sometimes things aren't working. So pick a gate, have your card at the ready, go to the sensor to the right of your gate, press it, the doors open, go through, don't hesitate, and there you are. To get on a bus, it's much the same thing. The stand next to the driver has a black rectangle sensor and space for a Charlie ticket. There's also a space to put in actual money. I don't recommend doing this, but if you do, make sure you have dollar bills, you have the correct change, and you're ready to go, because there's going to be a bunch of people in line behind you. One other thing I should mention is occasionally a bus will require that you pay to get off, not to get on. Leaving Harvard Station, for example, the 71 and the 73 buses, you just go on without paying and you have to pay when it's time to get off, so be prepared for that. Once you're inside the subway, some stations will let you swap between inbound and outbound without paying again. Harvard and Porter will, Central and Kendall won't, for example. Finally, let's talk about etiquette, how to behave on the T that makes things easier for everyone. First, don't get in the way. This covers a multitude of sins. This means don't stand in the way of people trying to get on the escalator. If you're not going anywhere, step aside out of the flow of traffic. Don't block an exit, especially the doors to a train. Take off your backpack. Trust me, it is far more of an obstacle than you think it is. It more than doubles the space you take up on the train, even if you don't think it does. Worse, you can hit people with it. Guess what I'm going to mention next. Stand behind the yellow line. Few things are more embarrassing than slowing down an entire train full of people while everyone watches because you didn't step back when the driver needed you to. Point two, right of way. Sometimes it's your turn to go first, and sometimes it's other people's. Let people exit the train before you try to get on it. On the escalators, stand on the right, walk on the left. If you're not planning on hurrying up the escalator, don't stand on the left that's getting in the way. And don't hold the doors. Don't stop a train from leaving by standing in the doorway just because your friend's running behind. It won't kill you to catch the next train. Point three, be prepared. Know what's going to happen and be ready to do what you need to do. Have your card, your ticket, or your cash ready before it's your turn to pay. Exit promptly when it's your turn to do so. And know your directions. Know where you're headed before you set out. And there you have it. I hope this video makes it much easier for you to use the T. My name's Robert Cruikshank. I'm a private tutor working out of Harvard Square, Cambridge. Thanks for watching.